Welcome back. I have continued to play rapid games over on Lee Chess every evening, even if I don't make videos about most of those games. Usually what I do at the end of those games is I just click the game review or Lee Chess's version of the game review button and just see if there's something that I can pinpoint what went wrong. Now, a couple of nights ago, I was surprised to see that I played with 97% accuracy. I didn't have any mistakes or blunders, just one inaccuracy, and my opponent only had one mistake. But I was tired and didn't look through that game at the time, so I'm going to look through that game now. I have pulled it up here. It actually, I said one mistake, my opponent had one blunder, and I can see from the move list that it was very early in the game. By the way, that's one thing I don't like about Lee Chess, is there's no way to remove that from the move list that I know of. I would like to go through the game with just the eval bar going up and down, and then I would know when the mistake was when I got there, rather than have a little bit of a spoiler here. But anyway, I'm going to try to make sense of this game and see if I can learn anything from it. We did open with the Carol Khan defense, and I have seen this exact variation a lot. Now, before that knight comes out to f3, here, what I believe is played at the higher levels is not knight to f3, if and when the Carol Khan is played at higher levels. Almost always you see d5. I did notice that the higher that my rapid rating got on both Lee Chess and Chess.com, and the higher that my daily or correspondence ratings got, the more likely I was to see d4 played here. But as my ratings dropped a little bit, I saw a lot more of the knight to f3 coming out. And so in this position, we almost always see a take here and then a recapture. And my opponent has given up a center pawn for one of my not center pawns. But this opponent did something different. They pushed the e pawn, and I don't see that very often. I'm going to look at stockfish and see. But e5 is right there. So, okay, maybe that was best. But definitely not taking, which is what I usually see. I wonder what the, the master's database says knight to c3 is by far the most common here. Okay, and the player's database says taking. Okay, by far, for players, the most common is to take in this position. And again, that, like I said, that's what I usually see here is taking of the d-pawn. Okay, I was just curious about that. But my opponent pushed past. Was I supposed to bring out the bishop? I did bring out the bishop. I didn't want to get it trapped in here if I play e6 now. It actually says c5 is best here. And then my opponent would play d4. And then it would be like if we did the advanced variation, but they got that knight out. So it would transpose. But if I get the bishop out now to either f5 or g4, then it's not like the advanced variation. Okay, well, that's what I did. They played one of their top moves. I played one of my top moves. One of their top moves. My best move. Now here, white has all sorts of possibilities, and that's one thing that I have disliked about the Karakhan defense the entire time I've been playing it, is that in most of these spots, white has a lot of choices, and black doesn't always have a lot of choices. Although so far in this one, it looked like I've had several choices each time too. Knight B to D2 is a choice, C4 is good, or C3. So any of those moves would be fine. The one that they played was putting out their dark squared bishop to immediately challenge my queen. I'm surprised that one wasn't counted as inaccurate because the rating, the evaluation dropped from zeros to minus 0 0.4 here. Now I did know that I probably shouldn't play the F pawn. Not only could they just take it and then be threatening a, you know, a discovered attack once the pawn moves again, but that weakens the, the diagonal there toward my king, right? So I, for me, it was either getting the knight or the bishop there. Ah, oh, the engine says I could check on A5 and they would bring the bishop back to block. And then I would just bring my queen back here to c7, I guess, to point at that pawn so that they won't take this one. Um, all right, but my best move was to block with the bishop. Okay, that's what I did. I thought it would be fair to trade off dark squared bishops here. And I thought they were going to take. This is, as you can see from the move list there, the, the point at which my opponent blundered. I mean, the clear thing here is that this piece isn't protected. It looks like it's protected, but it's not. Now, I was playing fast here. Uh, you can see the clocks, where they're really tiny, but I've only used 10 seconds for these first six moves. My opponent's only used 15 seconds, so we're playing relatively quickly for a 10-minute game. However, I have played the Karakhan now several hundred times, so most of these positions aren't that odd or unique to me. So I didn't feel like I needed to think a lot on these. But here, my opponent apparently didn't see it, but I did see it, that I have two pieces aimed at G5, and they only have one. So if they were to do something else, like just push a pawn that, you know, that's irrelevant to these, uh, these tensions here on the board, then I could take this. And if they took back, I would take this bishop. And then, because their queen's in danger, they would, they would probably take back my bishop there, and then I would take their knight too. So I'm going to come out a piece ahead. The, the only way for them to avoid that, that I know of, is to take here now. Um, oh, the, the, there's another way. They can just move their bishop out of that line of fire. Okay. That makes sense. It says they could play bishop to e3 would be just as good as taking. I'm not sure why bishop to f4 
would be worse. That, but that's what the li- the list of lines says is that bishop to f4 would be worse. And in that case, I would take here on f3, and they would take back. Oh, and then I would get this pawn. That makes sense. Because that's, the I guess, the whole point of pushing this forward in the first place is to put pressure on that pawn, the d-pawn. So basically, my opponent needed to take or bring this back here to protect that pawn. That makes sense. I understand that. But my opponent didn't understand it. I think they thought they can make another move because this bishop is protected. That's what they thought. The bishop on g5 is protected. This bishop's protected, so the knight is okay to move out of the way. But they didn't see, I guess, what, what I just saw is that they're going to end up losing an extra piece there. So, but they, because of what they thought, they went ahead and made another developing move. And of course, the reason that's a blunder is because it doesn't matter which one of these t- I take, I'm going to come out a piece ahead. If I take the knight first, then nothing's guarding this bishop. And if I take this bishop first and I take back, we already talked about that, I'm going to get their bishop for the bishop, and then I'm going to get their knight too with my queen. And that's basically what happened. I, I will be honest, I wasn't as worried about this tension here because, well, number one, I knew my queen was protecting that, but I was also watching this pawn. And I thought, their knight's the only thing guarding that pawn. So not only is their knight the only thing guarding this bishop, but it's the, well, their queen's guarding that pawn too, but they don't want to have their queen out there when I can immediately attack it with the knight. So I wasn't as worried about the bishop here on g5 as I was that knight, which is why I chose to take that. And Stockfish says, that's just fine. And their best move is to check. Really? Their best move would have been to check bishop to b5 check, which I guess I would have, it says I wouldn't have blocked with this knight. It says I would have moved my king over. And then they would have taken here on e7, and I would have taken back with my knight. And then I suppose they would move their queen at that point, because I got lost on that, but the, or, or no, they would, they could take here, because this bishop wouldn't be in the way of their queen anymore. But, but I couldn't take their queen because I would be in check first here, and then once I moved this, I would be in check again. And I assume if I had blocked here, that they would take, and then when I took back with the pawn, then they could take back here, maybe with the queen? I don't know exactly how that would work. But my opponent didn't see that checking would be their best move. I assumed they were going to take one of the bishops, and they did take one of the bishops, but only uh, those were their second and third best moves, not as good as checking. So they take here. Okay, now I was curious about this, whether or not I played my best move. It says I could take back here, but if I did, I would lose this bishop. And it says, wait, it says they wouldn't take with the bishop. It says they would take with the pawn. Okay, but yeah, I thought if I took back here, they would take this. But I also thought, what if I took their bishop? If they took back, then I'll take theirs. And that's, that would come out a piece ahead. And if instead they took my queen, then I would take their queen. And I would still come out a piece ahead. Because right now we're even. So I did make the best move. I took their bishop. So I'm a piece ahead. And now, but their best move was to take my queen. And my best move was to take their queen. But now again, they have the choice of saving their bishop. And then I save mine. Or losing their, or taking my bishop. And then I take theirs. One difference is that they could take mine with a rook. And still be able to castle. And when I take theirs, then I'm, I've lost castling rights. So that's why I thought they were going to take that bishop here, but they actually played their best move, which was to save their bishop, which means I should save mine. And I can do it a couple of different ways. I can bring it all the way back here. I don't think I would want to bring it back part way. I think I would want to bring it back all the way so that I could come back around if they threatened it with a pawn or something. But the other way was to take this pawn on c2, which I thought that would be the same number of moves to get back here to g6 as the other diagonal, but this way I would get a pawn with it. It says h5 is slightly better. But not that much better. So this was fine. Okay. Oh, but they can make me forfeit my right to castle anyway by playing knight to b5 here because they'd be threatening the fork. So I would have to bring my king at that point. And then once I did bring my king, they wouldn't be threatening that anymore, but they could plant their knight here on d6 and it would be stuck there for a long time, apparently. I'm surprised that after the knight to b5, the second best move Stockfish suggests is king to d2 coming after the bishop, because then wouldn't I just escape with the bishop? It says that I would, and they would have lost their right to castle. But maybe it's not as important because the center is kind of locked right now, but my opponent did want to connect their rooks, so they castled, which wasn't listed there, and takes us to minus five. Okay. See, I, I did... I I was planning on coming back here one way or the other. Remember I talked about I could come back this way to get here, or I could take the pawn first and then come back here. And even though they didn't come after my bishop, I was still concerned about that. But Stockfish isn't concerned about that. It says I can just go here. Oh, you know what? That's my second best move. Bishop to d3. That would have been nice. Not only does it threaten the rook, which I assume would move. It says that it would. But then I can play c4, protecting my bishop. I didn't even think of that, but Stockfish says my best move is to actually just threaten the bishop now, and it would have come back. And then I would have played here, bishop to d3, ready to post it in place with that pawn. And their bishop, okay, 
One reason I'm ahead at minus five instead of minus three, because I'm up a piece and a pawn. But and I think one reason I'm ahead is that their bishop is behind basically its pawn chain. And it has no way of getting in front of that pawn chain right now. Once I play h6, their bishop is stuck behind its own pawns, whereas my bishop is in front of the pawn chain. Well, I did what I had originally planned, which was to come back here. It is one of their top moves to take this pawn, so they did, and now I'm supposed to play h6 or a6. I guess a6 is to keep their knight from coming in this way, but knight to c6 is up there, and usually in the Karakon. Now, all this other stuff hasn't happened yet, but we've got these, these pawns here, and when they take that one, usually what I do is put this knight on c6, and that's, that's the best move. Not on move 12, but like on move 5 or something. But when I saw that, I thought, that's probably the best move, but... It says if I do that, they will put this knight in here. Did they? I put this here. It is definitely one of their best moves to play knight to b5, and they did. Oh, and I'm just supposed to bring the king? Okay, so I thought that usually when this knight comes here that I'm supposed to bring this rook over to guard this spot, especially since my knight is guarding a7. But it says no, I should have brought my king to d7. Or threatened their bishop. Or just, what, what, really? It's my third best move to put my knight on e7. And they're not going for the fork. They're going for in here on d6. Sorry, I forgot exactly where I was because somehow, for some reason, I, I'm pretty sure I clicked the next button, but it went to the last move of the game, which I didn't want to do. I wanted to go to the next move of the game. But anyway, if I had known that their aim was d6, I would not have brought the rook over. Because in my experience, when this knight comes to b5, it's almost always going for the c7 check and forking with the rook. But Stockfish knew that they were not. So when I brought their rook over, my opponent almost immediately went in there. Look, that's two seconds. So that had to have been what they were planning. They weren't planning this. So I, that was something my opponent definitely got the jump on me. And they got the fork anyway. Let this be a lesson to me and to you in future games that, depending on the situation, this knight is not always coming in for this fork. Sometimes it's coming in for an outpost square here, like d6, especially this one where it has two pawns defending that square, and I can get rid of one of them, and then maybe the other one later, but by then it's going to be too late. And one problem with the fork idea is that even if they do end up getting the rook, they're not getting back out of there. But planting a knight in here is far more constricting. Okay, so I, I did not do perfectly there, but I am still up a piece. So when this happens, I am supposed to go to d7. Oh, it says f8 would have been much worse. I, I didn't consider going to f8. I wanted to be here in case they took my rook. So I went there. Okay, and this surprises me. They're not supposed to take my rook. They're supposed to play a pawn move, according to Stockfish. f4, f3, or b4. Okay, I understand f4 because it's protecting this vulnerable pawn right here because my, my knight's currently attacking that pawn, right? I'm not sure I understand b4. It says I wouldn't take it, but I could. I could just take it. I don't know how bad that would be. But I don't understand f3 or b4 now. I thought they were going to take a rook here. My opponent didn't do any of those things, what they were supposed to do or what I was expecting. They moved this rook over, coming after this completely defended pawn. That might not have been what they were doing. They might have been trying to lift it around, maybe, coming this way, possibly. But, I mean, that's defended too. So I don't know what rook a to d1 does. I guess it's technically a semi-open file, since they don't have a pawn on that file, but, but it's not helping them, at least in any way that I can see. Well, I was, because I was surprised they didn't take my rook, which again is what I had been expecting, or for that matter, they could have taken a free pawn right here and then come right back. They didn't do either one of those things. They would have gone up one point of material by that maneuver. They would have gone up two points of material by going there and letting me take. Well, I didn't want them to do it on the next turn, either one of those, which is again what I thought they were going to do, so I moved the rook up. As soon as I did, I realized, oh wait, they can just go here now and challenge my rook again. But but that's not one of their best moves. But they could. But their knight, their knight is safe where it is. Their best moves, again, are pawn moves. A3, F4. Again, I understand F4 because my knight is pointed at that pawn. Or bishop to D2. Oh, I guess maybe trying to come around this way? Well, my opponent played their best move. And I'm supposed to get this knight out again or play f6. Well, as I just said on the previous turn, since I moved my rook, I thought my opponent might try to go here and, and do the exchange again. I was fixated on the knight for the rook exchange because the whole when they first went to b5, I thought that's why they were coming in there. And then when they went to d6 with the check and forked my king and rook, again, I thought they were going for that exchange and they didn't do it. What I should have realized by this point is that's not what they want. But I was still worried about it. 
And I was still worried that they could come here but back to B5 and threaten my rook again. And I thought, what if I prevented them from going there? So I played a move that's not among my best. I prevented their knight from moving to b5, which apparently they were not intending to do. I think the reason a3 was their best move and the reason that my opponent found it is because it prepares b4, which is their best move now. So they surprised me by playing h4. I didn't know what that was about. Because remember I said I understood f4. Well, as soon as I quit worrying about this exchange, I'm not worried about that anymore because now their knight doesn't have a way to get to my rook. Now I can focus back on that pawn, which is one of the reasons in the Karakhan you put this knight on c6 is because this pawn or sometimes that one is in you know needs taking and so i took that is it my best move it's one of my best moves they are supposed to play b4 now or f4 to challenge my knight they did play b4 now i'm not 100 percent certain but i assume the reason for all of this is to try to break through on this side and if so i that really doesn't explain why they moved the rook over here in the first place when they move that a rook over because you'd think you'd want the rook behind some of these pawns that are trying to break through on the queen side I did finally decide it was time to play f6 because I would have multiple pieces defending that square and it was time to get this knight in the rook out because I'm up a piece but two of my pieces have not moved in the entire game. My opponent has moved all their pieces so I did play this in the hopes of getting my knight out. Bishop to f4 is my opponent's best move and I, sh <laughs> and I should have played knight to f7, I mean sorry knight to e7 or knight to h6. I, I wouldn't have played knight to h6, even though I was a piece ahead. I still don't want to do this because then I'm going to have two pawns stacked up there. And, and those two pawns are going to be isolated. Not that my opponent would take, but if they did, you know? But I guess I should have realized at this point, uh, every trade, every even trade should benefit me. But I also know I have to be really careful about this knight here. It's, it's keeping my king from going to a lot of places, and it's threatening a lot of places. And because of that, I decided to get rid of it. I, I made a mistake here, and there's a, I think there's a reason. It's not a mistake. The game review didn't count it as a mistake. But if I had seen then what I saw later, as soon as I moved it, I wouldn't have done it. What I did was play knight to f7. And the reason was I wanted to get rid of that knight. But, of course, once both of those knights move, they can, get an, they can go up and exchange here. And again, maybe I shouldn't have been worried about that because it wasn't in their best interest to do it earlier. And somehow my opponent knew that, I guess. They didn't do it. So once I moved my knight down here, it's not even their best move to take it. It's their, it's their best move to go here. Okay, knight to c4 because I can't take it because that pawn is pinned. I get it. But it's their second best move to take my knight. And again, now, now my rook's exposed. But I am supposed to take back here and they are supposed to take my rook now. Now it's in their best interest to go up the exchange. They did. And now I'm only up two points of material instead of four. But somehow I'm still at minus four on the evaluation. Bringing the rook over was one of their best moves. And finally, I played knight to e7. a4 is one of their best moves. Knight to c6 is what I played. But I should have played h5, which, okay, I get it. It stops that pawn from going anywhere. And I guess if they ever played this, I could take it. And then my rook's open down there. So h5, I get that. I don't ever, almost ever, get h5 when it says to play it on like move 10 or something. But here I definitely get it, and I really need to be considering that more often, especially when I have a rook down here. That rook still has not moved. Okay, e5. I get a5. Right now I was just noticing that my bishop was guarding the e-pawn, but if I played it here, the pawn would be guarding it, and then my bishop would be guarding the d-pawn. So, okay, e5, or rook to a8. Stockfish says, finally, move that rook. But I didn't. I, I played this, going after this pawn that's probably just going to move now. It is their best move to move it, and they did. I'm supposed to go to e5 or a5, or back to where I was. Well, uh, once again, I picked the wrong move. I, I moved the knight to there. I, I think I see why that's the worst one of the possible knight moves, because that way, actually, you know what? I can protect that, so I'm not sure why that's worse. But yeah, I thought there, I can always move up this a pawn to, pro to protect it. And of course, if I moved there and they took this pawn, I could take with my other pawn, and if they tried to get me with the rook, then I could still protect my knight. So I'm not sure why that's bad. I, I, this one's fine. It's protected, but it blocks this pawn. I, w I wanted to start moving that pawn at some point. So I don't get that. E7. Do not understand that either. A5. Nope. Okay. E even after seeing what Stockfish suggests, I like my move the best. That's what I played. A and it says it's not that bad. It's the same evaluation as those others. Wait, if I back up, is it going to suggest knight to b4? Oh no. What if I, what if I push the plus button and let it run some more? 
I assume you can see that. Once I let Stockfish run a little bit more, it said Knight to B4 is absolutely my best move. Now it is still running. I don't know if it will change. It did change. Okay. If I let that depth continue to get deeper and deeper, we're at like depth of 29 now. Oh, but, but B4 has come back to the highest, bestest move. I don't know if there's a way to stop that. I can hear my computer's fan kick on, so I'm going to skip this. Okay, well, that makes me feel better that after I let Stockfish run to a deeper depth, it said that this was the best move down at, at around a depth of 30, which is nice. Okay, they need to play F4 again, although now I have no idea what F4 would do. They did not. They played B6, which is what I thought they would do. And I don't know why it's so much worse than what they should have played, but again, that's what I was expecting. I was expecting either them to take this pawn or to check me, but I thought if they check me, I can just move up one, which isn't listed as my best move. It's my third best move. Interestingly enough, again, I wonder if I press the plus button if it's going to be my best move. But my idea was that moving up to C6 not only continues to protect this pawn, which is protecting that one, but it blockades both of those pawns pretty much permanently. And there's no way that their rook can stop these pawns. My knight's guarding that one. Well, now I see what F4 would have done. F4 would have protected the E5 square, but I am planning on playing E5. And then I'm going to play D4 and I'm going to have connect four. And honestly, I can't remember if I ever made it, but I was eventually then planning on getting a connect five. And we'll find out in just a second if I got it. But I did play king to C6, which is apparently fine because we're still at minus five. Rook to B1 is one of their best moves. A5 is my best move, which is what I said I would do. And now all three of those pawns are cemented in place in a lot of these situations, Stockfish will actually actually suggest throwing away a rook to get rid of a knight. But in this case, that would have given me a passed pawn. So I can see why it is not saying that. It is saying f4, and that's because they know I want to play f5. My opponent did not know that. They played g4, which allows me to play, to play e5, which I did and was my best move. Now f4 is again their best move. Oh, no. F4 is among their best moves. Stockfish is having trouble deciding here. But F3 is listed. They did play F3. That, of course, prevents the next one, which I wasn't going to play. I told you I was going for Connect 4. It is my best move. So I have Connect 4 now. Now, at this point, my opponent played, did you guess it? F4. Now, they do have two pieces aimed at the E5 square. They have their pawn and their rook aimed there. But I can fix that by pulling a rook over. I can fix that by playing knight to C2 and ignoring that pawn for a minute because I'm threatening the rook. But then I don't know where I would have gone after that. It says they just would have moved the rook over one. And then I could have pushed past. If I played here and they went there, then I could have pushed past. But what if I played here and they just came up one? I don't know. We, ne we never got there. Well, I didn't see that, but I saw the next one listed, which is knight to d3. And the reason I saw that one is because I figured they would move their rook. And then I could get that pawn. So that's what I did. They did move their rook, but they went to a place where they could protect that pawn. It's not in my best move. It's not listed as one of my top three, but I went ahead and took it anyway. And I'm still up minus six. It's not their best move, but they threw this rook in here. I, I, don't, I, I don't know what the idea was. Was it, was it to protect this pawn? Maybe they were going after my A pawn. Well, I played my top move, which was to force the issue with this rook, bishop to d5. And I also thought, depending on where that rook went, I could I maybe harass the other rook too. That rook is supposed to go all the way back, and it did. And now, because my bishop is guarding this square, e5, I'm supposed to push that pawn forward. One of my... Sorry, I said e5. It's e4. Supposed to push the pawn forward or put a rook behind it again or knight to d3 again. And they're all minus seven or so. I did play knight to d3 again. It's one of their best moves to challenge the knight. And uh, now I can play e4, which protects the knight and advances my pawn a little bit. It's one of my opponent's best moves to take the a5 pawn, which I guess is the reason that they came in there. And it's my best move to put the bishop here because I want to keep pushing my e-pawn, but then my knight wouldn't be protected anymore. So putting my bishop here protects the knight so that I can push the e-pawn. And I have no idea why it says rook to d2 is their best move because they know I want to push this. And it says that I would. In fact, my next move is e3, no matter what they do. But it says they would go there so that when I played e3, they would then just move over one. Oh, because they would be threatening the bishop. And they can't threaten the bishop this way because of my knight. So they would come here knowing I'm going to play e3, then skip over here to threaten my bishop. And what would I do once they... Oh, then I would put the knight back here where it would protect the bishop. Oh, nice. I, I don't know if I would have figured that out or not. My opponent went down here to, to challenge this defended pawn. They're very concerned about getting these pawns passed. They're not yet passed pawns even though two of them are across the halfway point. My B pawn, which is defended by my king, is preventing all of those pawns from being technically past pawns just by its existence, but it's also keeping them from going anywhere. 
I don't know if they were thinking about sacrificing themselves and then hoping that they could just force their way through. I don't think it would have worked, but but when they did that, I, I made a mistake. My only inaccuracy of this game, I was supposed to play E3, but what, when they did that, I thought, you know what? They, they undefended this pawn, and I took it, but that was bad. Yeah, it's not minus 10, minus 9, or even minus 7, it's minus 4. Well, what I thought is if they took this, which would protect that one, then I could just come down beside it. And then if they checked or something, I could just take that one too. I, I didn't see how they could get through. Also, I, I haven't moved this rook yet. It, it could come over at any moment and help, but he's very, very lazy. But what they did was this, a5. I'm sure their idea was to protect this, but, but they could have protected that by taking this pawn. It's my best move now to, to bring this king back. It, it's not my best move to do what I did, which was this. Which which I thought was funny at the time uh, during the game. I thought that was funny and I still do because these two of course protect each other and guess where that rook's gonna go? That rook's not gonna go anywhere ever. So I locked this rook in the corner uh, almost in the corner. Yeah, but he's stuck. My opponent decided it was time to bring their king. So they did that and uh, it wasn't actually my best move, but I finally on move 37 brought my H rook into the game, but I didn't bring it in the way that the engine wanted. The engine wanted to bring it over here. I don't know why. But I figured I could help with these pawns. And also I felt bad for that rook. It hadn't moved at all yet. He probably felt bad too. Let's, let's assume that the rook also felt bad and wanted to help instead of just being lazy. Well, my opponent kept bringing the king. I think one of the problems with this, well, it will find out the problem with that in a second. But yeah, I did play my best move here, by the way. I, I, I did not know that this was going to be check. That's the problem with their king staying on this diagonal. I just saw that I was going to attack this rook. And I wasn't sure where exactly the rook was going to go. I thought it might come over here to attack my knight. But then I could bring the knight in here and attack that pawn, which is unsafe right now, undefended. And my rook now is behind these two pawns. And the two pawns are friends. They can help each other. Sorry, it did it again. I clicked next and it went to the end of the game, skipping the final moves. That's so frustratingly chess. I didn't know this was going to be check when I played this move, when I played knight to b2. I just thought I was going after the rook, as I said, but it did turn out to be check. The king stayed on that diagonal, so this is check, and I'm going to win the rook. My opponent didn't play any of the best moves here. Their best move is to sacrifice their rook for that bishop, which is putting the king in check. And, and the engine thinks I wouldn't even take back yet. I would first check with d3 and then take back. But my opponent went the other way, not staying anywhere near the rook. So now I'm not just going up the exchange. I'm getting the rook for free with check. And there my opponent resigned. Okay, there were a few lessons in that game. I know this video took longer than it should have. It'll be shorter for you because I'm going to edit out the parts that messed up where Lee Chess took me to the end of the game when I clicked the next button or the couple of times where it... In, anyway, so I'm pretty proud of myself. I didn't play the best move every time and, and I didn't think that I had. That was one reason I wanted to go through here to, to see what I could have done better. And also the I, I, I wanted to point out the part where I played knight to b2 check, which I didn't even know it was going to be check. I was just going after the rook. But I did, And I also thought it was funny that this rook got trapped in the corner. But I did feel bad for my opponent that they only made one mistake at the very beginning of the game, one blunder, on move seven. And they, they also didn't play perfectly after that, but they played really well. No more mistakes or blunders, just a handful of inaccuracies. But that one blunder was enough. That By the time they got to this point, there wasn't much they could have done. There are a few places where they could have played maybe mildly, slightly, incrementally better. And maybe if I wasn't, and I wasn't playing the perfect move every time, maybe they could have closed the gap if they had played perfectly the whole time. For those of you who ask, I am currently rated 1595 in Rapid on Lee Chess. I know that that rating doesn't show up here on the board when I'm going through these games, but some of you will ask, and then I'll know who didn't watch the video. Thank you for spending your time here. I'll see you next time.